morning, everybody. Welcome back. Let's head back up for the last few days of deer camp. It's a couple minutes after six o'clock in the morning right now. 23 degrees. Looks like we have some light snow falling. George has been up there hunting all week. Uh, Tom has been up there some of the days. Last weekend his son Steven was up there. And they, the beginning of the week there was nothing. Just, you know, no new sign. I think they saw one set of deer tracks somewhere. Anyway, yesterday he texted me and that was the first day that both him and Tom saw fresh tracks in several different areas. So that was good news anyway. Maybe some deer are moving back into the area. Filling up with fuel now. It's cold out there since it's 28 degrees, but that wind is is blowing and they say it's gonna be gusting up over 30 miles an hour. In fact, George, when I was talking to him last night, said he wasn't even sure he was going to go out this morning just because the weather was going to be so brutal. I have no need to get groceries this time. I just threw frozen stuff into the my cooler. I'm just going to have to remember to thaw it out when I get up there. Up at the tent, it's just going to be me there. Uh, my dad, I thought that he was going to be coming up for this, the last, you know, few days of deer hunting, and he, uh, I don't know, kind of beat around the bush this week and said today he had a doctor appointment and then he might come up and then I ended up getting a text yesterday that said good luck hunting. So I'm guessing he's not coming, but I can't be positive. Earlier this week, George and Tom had just come out from their deer stand and were chatting by their trucks and they got stopped by the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources stopped and checked their license and checked to make sure that the four-wheeler was registered correctly. And they said the number one thing that they catch people doing is baiting for deer, which is illegal in Minnesota. And they had caught, I think he said four or five different groups up in the Northeast Minnesota area doing that this year. And those people lose their license right away, they lose their guns and everything. So it's like it's just not worth it. <laughs> now the roads are starting to look a little bit more like it's deer hunting. tracks.
Well, it's definitely chilly in here. I want to get that stove going right away. I'm just getting stuff unloaded. Uh, I took out spare ribs for dinner tonight. You know, I have some pork steaks. I just took stuff that was in the freezer. Maybe I'll take those out. If you're going to cook once, might as well just cook enough so I have enough for a couple days. Milk that's been frozen for about two weeks. <laughs> Let that thaw out. I have my headlamp and camera batteries charging. I have my second phone charging. I mainly just use that one because I get another 15 gigabytes of hotspot. So I bring that one up here with me too. And there's one more squirrel out there that uh, we'll see if he gives me a chance. I keep hearing him running on top of the roof of the tent. And people were asking before how does it get in. They get in right through here but I had to cut this out to fit the dresser in here and because it wouldn't yeah there's no other way to do it so even if I put something up in here it might start chewing on my dresser so I don't know I gotta figure something out but I have no way of moving it to the left I mean it just barely fits in here as it is all my clothes I, they're all washed and scent free soap and since I do hotels during the week that I've been coming up here hunting I just throw all my clothes in the bag and <laughs> use what I need bring the dirty stuff home after deer hunting weekend this weekend I can finally uh, put this stuff away and just bring enough down for the hotels for the next few weeks until my work season is done I have the electric blanket set on five that really helps warm this room up quicker in a couple hours, I brought up uh, those frozen hamburgers. I'm just going to have those for lunch and maybe a Lunchable and a Satsuma with that. I was going to go out there and grab those pork steaks, and then I remembered I have two turkey thighs in there, and they are so good on the grill. So I grabbed those, and I'll let them thaw out today.
drove the loop looking for any deer tracks or anything and now I decided to drive over this is where my brother and I this was before the tent was built and I mean this was I don't know 20 25 years ago we used to hunt back here I've talked about it before I've actually I don't know when it was but I drove back here and uh, we would set up a canvas wall tent every year and uh, Chris, myself, and Chris's brother-in-law, Johan, we would deer hunt back here. And I just wanted to check it out and it's weird because there's been a lot of stuff that's been logged out that I haven't been back here for a long time and it just looks different. I did see two groups of or there was two cars parked in one clearing, a new cleared out, you know, where they logged the area. And then way back toward the tar, there was somebody in a small travel trailer that must be up here deer hunting. And then also when I was driving in here, there was a person with a dog sled team. And you know, when they train them, they have the dogs pull the four wheeler that's not running and uh, pass them up too. Back in 1991, that's the year that we had the big Halloween storm that dropped like two feet of snow. And then a week later, there was another big storm that dropped a bunch of snow. And we came up here and that was the only year we could not drive in here because we tried so hard to drive it and the snow was uh, like the middle of your the grill on the truck so it was it was almost waist deep and we could we had to be camped back where that where I said there was a travel trailer and we just hunted around that area that was probably the hardest hunting year ever for deer because just going out and you know we found places to sit and just getting there was so exhausting walking through that deep snow we never did shoot anything that year. We used to get some nice deer back here. I remember this hill. When it's icy, it's, you gotta be so careful and then trying to get back up it when you leave. I'm not gonna leave the same way. I'm gonna go out another way, but yeah. When we first started hunting here, this was freshly logged. And we put the tent up in here. And we had a long walk back. And then I was back here last time and they had logged part of it again up front here. But this was more open where now it's just a trail. Sometime I'll have to come up and we'll walk all the way back to where we used to have our stands. I had a stand, there was three trees growing up, and I had a deer stand built in it. Back then you could build permanent stands. And uh, it was right next to this little creek or creek or whatever it was, this little water that would run. And you would sit in that stand and I could hear that water running and it would pretty much put me to sleep. <laughs> I did shoot deer out of that stand. My brother Chris got two big ones back here. Down here a little way as we built a, my brother John came up one year. He came up for a couple years, but the, that last year, he's never deer hunted. I don't know, he doesn't deer hunt anymore, but we did build him a stand over here somewhere. He never saw anything, but. Then I had a friend named Roger that, yeah, I used to do a lot of hunting with him. And he came up here too, a, a few times. over there for 
I don't know how many years I'd have to look back in my picture albums. And then we moved up here, and this is the spot that I know that I have showed in another video. Because they logged the whole area out, and when we were there, it was not logged. Looks like they got a heck of a logging operation going there. Look at all those stacked logs. Yeah, none of this was like this at all. Wow. In that first spot that we deer hunted in where I got out before. That was six and a half miles off the tar and there was nobody back here. I mean we would be back here and you're lucky to even see if a car drove by when you were here and then we went farther back because this is probably I don't know seven and a half eight miles to this next spot we're gonna go look at. And we camped right down in this little, I don't know what you'd call it. But I mean, they left the pine trees, but they, there was a lot of other trees and they've come in and cleared it all. There used to still be the part of our, we had a wooden kitchen in the, in the tent. We'd put the tent right back in here. And no matter how windy it was, it was nice because we're surrounded by all this taller stuff. Oh yeah, there it is. And I know I've showed this before years ago, but for new people, they wouldn't have. That was our, we had shelves, just, you know, how the tent is now. It was a similar tent. And then there was just shelves on that whole back wall for the cook stove and everything. And yeah, yeah, we were here for a few years. Never got a deer up back here, but it was a really nice place to camp. I remember the one day I was walking out to my, we had deer stands up here, so we would walk down this way. And I come up here, and right in this little thing of water, there's one green wing teal. Duck hunting is still open then. Went back to my truck, got my shotgun, walked over here, shot the green wing teal. And then went back and got my deer rifle and headed out to the deer stand. Oh wow, it looks like they're logging up here too. I think next year on the opening weekend of deer hunting, I'm going to drive back here and see where people are hunting because this, with all that logging going on, deer just there'd be a magnet to that because as the fresh stuff grows up, they'll have food. And I wouldn't mind putting a stand back here somewhere. I mean, just like that other stand I've got, what's the difference if you have to drive a little ways to sit in it? This is nice. You could put a stand up and you can cover so much area. I mean, just look at how they logged that out. That's a big beaver house right there. Look at this tree right here. <laughs> it's like one last tree there. They've been chewing on the bottom, but they don't have it down yet. If you go up that little hill there, there's a, you have to walk down and there's a hidden little lake back there. It's not a secret to locals, but you, we would go back in there and you could get sunfish bigger than your hand, big ones and a lot of bass. And it's a nice little uh, gem of a lake that not a whole lot of people know about. to the tent. It's already 
just about time for lunch and then let's figure out a afternoon plan for the deer stand. Is where I park to go to my clearing stand. I think we'll sit in dad's stand tonight because that's a long walk out into that clearing and I'll be able to see if there are any old deer tracks. And I think we'll start there. Once I'm out there, if there are, are any tracks, like sometimes in that clearing they like to like scoot along the edge of the trees on the edge of the clearing. If I see any tracks there, then the best stand to sit in like the next morning would be uh, in my clearing stand because the ones that follow along that side sometimes come in front of that stand. Well, shooting time just ended. I was really hoping that wind would die down tonight like it usually does and you know it gets real quiet and perfect but the wind has just picked up this afternoon. <laughs> I saw no fresh sign coming in here so I think tomorrow morning we'll sit in my clearing stand on the other end of this and see if there's anything over there. I think I'm the only one that's driven on this road today. I think what I'm going to do 
for the next 45 minutes or so is edit on the deer hunting video from last week. <laughs> I'm still working on that. It ended up being 27 folders and I think I just loaded six, uh, number 16 in here. So I want to do this, then I'll get out there and start the grill. And we'll throw the ribs and the turkey thighs on there. They're still thawing out. I put them in the fridge when I left and they're pretty good now. But And we'll get that done and uh, yeah, then tomorrow we'll try the clearing stand, mine, and if there's no sign there, I think tomorrow afternoon I may, it all depends on the weather, you know, today it was so windy, um, the, and it was really windy yesterday, and now in the morning it's supposed to be 14 degrees, it'll be chilly, but anyway, you know, even if there were any deer around, they wouldn't have been really moving around today, but I was hoping that that wind would die down, because it's been so windy and crappy now for like a day and a half. And then the deer would want to come out to eat, but that just never happened. So yeah, I think I'll do my clearing stand in the morning and then tomorrow afternoon I may go out to my ground blind stand and just see what's going on out there. Are there any tracks over on on that, you know, a ways away like that. So, I mean, for there it's just one trail. <laughs> you know that one road that goes down and I'm sitting up here. So if there either has been deer there or there hasn't, because I'm not looking anywhere else. I kind of think that that storm is kind of petering out. I mean, it's going to be nasty, but no big, huge amounts of snow. I didn't know they could be killed. This is the first moment in my life I felt hope. I'm going to put one of them in foil and in comments on the last video because I'm going to put a piece of apple underneath this. And they said that they don't uh, wrap them, put them in there and they get a little bit of smoky flavor. So I want to try it and see what happens. Okay everyone, well it's a little bit after 10, it's time for bed. It's not as windy as it was before, but I can still hear it blowing in the trees. We'll see what it's like tomorrow. was uh, out there a little while ago and you can see the very last part of the lunar eclipse that happened last night. The skies are actually clear enough. It's kind of wispy clouds. You know, you can still see the moon, but there was wispy clouds underneath it. I had to run out and try to check it out. I wasn't going to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go see it, but I got to see a little bit of it.
plow is just getting my heavy jacket on and stuff and George drove by heading out to his stand so I talked to him for a few minutes. Tom is coming up today and tonight uh, his son Stephen rabbit tracks. It's uh, just about time to get off the stand this morning. It started out real nice. It's chilly. It wasn't too bad until that wind picked up, but did not see a thing. Let's walk back here and see if we see any deer sign. I was texting with George and he was out. The camp robbers of the Gray Jays were out by his stand keeping him company and uh, he said this was the coldest morning on the stand. It definitely was. And like he said, I said I'm going to go check this out after I leave the stand and he said he was going to check out a couple of trails also. He said it can't be any worse than what it is over there. I'm seeing fox tracks and rabbit tracks, but not seeing any deer tracks. be sitting there this afternoon but at least I got all my stuff out. Well, I think about 10 more minutes I'll get my stuff on and we'll head out to Zachary's stand this afternoon. That wind has 
not dive down. In fact, it really blows hard sometimes. And his stand is kind of open, but uh, I don't even know if I've sat in that one this year. So let's, let's go sit in that one tonight for the last, I don't know, two and a half hours. And uh, we'll see if we see anything. Well, shooting time just ended. Nice night, but uh, no deer. Let's head back to the tent. I'm just sitting here editing on this video because I'm on the last folder and uh, George texted me. My dad texted me, George texted me, uh, but George said that Tom is, he's done for the season and uh, Stephen and John are going to be coming up tonight. So he doesn't have high expectations, he says, but you know, it only takes a second. We know there are a few deer around. It's just somebody seeing one on their stand and it being a buck so we'll see what happens tomorrow tonight I finished editing that almost finished editing that video I put the last clip in of the tent when I end it standing outside the tent looking at it and saved the project and I still had to go through you know driving down the driveway and leaving anyway the computer blue screen crashed, which is done twice during this project. But this is the longest video I've ever edited. Anyway, I'm on my second, well, I've done it twice, you know, reloaded the saved program and it will not load into the editor. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. I, now I've just let it sit for probably 45 minutes and it's still not loaded. Just watched a video that Zachary did on deer camp and deer hunting and uh, I, I always watch him and then we make sure everything is okay and then I can make it public but anyway I'm a little bit uh, uh, I guess I can't say the word <laughs> I've been working on this for 10 days so that's all I've been doing tonight I had just leftovers for dinner and uh, watching some Star Trek Voyager Okay, everyone, it's about a quarter after 10. And it feels like it's past my bedtime. I was really hoping that wind would die down. Either way, we'll be out in the deer stand tomorrow.
Good morning, everybody. It's a good 10 to 12 degrees warmer than it was yesterday morning. Still a little bit of wind. I think I'm going to go sit in my dad's stand this morning. Well, it's just about time to call it a morning. Nice morning to sit. I mean, the temperature wasn't bad, but that wind definitely has a chill to it. And it's kind of coming southwest-ish. So instead of coming in behind me, it hits me on the right side. And the right side of my face would get chilly. I did hear two separate shots, maybe. I don't know, hour, hour and a half ago. They were a ways away, but the first shots that I have heard, and George said the same thing that he had heard in days. I think I might have saved the three hour deer hunting movie. I had to go to the expert side, the quick side. I bet you it has so, it just can't handle it anymore because <laughs> it was such a long video. So I went to the expert side, which I don't play with this. I, I like to use the scene line versus the timeline. And basically that's because I'm comfortable with the scene line. That's what was with my previous editing software. But uh, this would be a better way to do it because you can see where the noise is, you know, where you start to talk and everything. It doesn't help when I've got my diesel running in the background because it can constantly show <laughs> noise. But um, I guess I better start playing around with this. Just cooking up burgers on the gas grill today for lunch so that I have enough uh, I have one more of the turkey thigh thighs left that I did a couple days ago so I'll have that for dinner tonight I won't have to cook Well, I'm getting ready to go to the stand, talking with Melissa on Messenger. Just was working on that video this afternoon. And tonight I'll get everything cleaned up, because tomorrow morning I will be heading home. One last time in the stand this deer season.
Okay, everyone. Well, that's going to do it for this year's deer hunting season. Shooting time just ended. Switching out all the batteries and the uh, trail cameras because next time up will probably be the winter trip. Although I think I'm going to come up here more than once this winter. Once I get back from Louisiana. Uh, but yeah, I always redo everything right before I leave from deer hunting. Those boots can now be the tent boots. I have the wood box all filled up and I have some bigger ones on top there but underneath I made sure that I grabbed some smaller ones from the wood pile because when I get up here from for the winter trip it's cold in here and I need to get a good fire going fast so it heats up and the smaller wood has more edges you know the flame burns up faster and I get more heat once it's nice and warm in here like it is now then you can just go ahead and put bigger ones in there because you're just maintaining the heat. But at the winter trip, it takes so long to uh, to heat up the walls and the floor and just everything in here. But it's always a fun time. Well, I already have it now, so I think I can be out of here within a half hour or 45 minutes in the morning. But I definitely want to vacuum yet tonight because... I can't stand doing that, especially in the morning.
Okay, everyone. Well, it's uh, quarter to 11 and it's time for bed. Tomorrow I'll finish packing stuff up and head home. Good morning, everybody. It's just about 6.30 right now and it started snowing out there. Uh, it wasn't snowing an hour ago, but we're not going to get a whole lot, but enough to slick it up the road. So I'm getting my stuff together and time to head out. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. The next time up to the tent will be the winter trip. on the next video.